Well, hi there. Will and I have come here to Santa Cruz at the heart of the Peruvian Amazon with a crack team of experienced herpers to search out and document every snake species that we possibly can. Let's see what we can find. So inside of my hat is a very grumpy little Amazon tree boa. And it is the tree boas. <laughs> Did you see that? He just bit my hat. He's like that. The tree boas are the ones that convinced me on this trip that you shouldn't be afraid to take a bite if it means you would miss out on catching a snake. And I don't want to miss out on catching a snake and I'm willing to take a bite from this guy, but if it can be avoided, I'd like to avoid it. There's no chill in this dude. And that seems to be fairly typical. That is yourself. That's yourself. This one in particular shows a real lack of judgment though uh, when it comes to the whole biting game. Man, so he's hanging out in my hat. That wasn't on purpose. I scooped him inside of my hat because he was about to bite somebody else. Then he, he decided to hold on. But uh, he's a very cool but very grumpy little snake. These guys, you can find them at night. They usually are uh, hanging in trees, especially over the water. And you can see their eye shine. So their eyes reflect back light because they've got excellent night vision. And so they've got reflective, I think it's called tapetum lucidum in the back of their eyes that magnifies the amount of light in there so they can see better in the dark. You're about to take a shot at me, aren't you? Hey, buddy, you're a, you are a grumpy soul. You are one grumpy snake. Very cool labial heat pits on this guy. And they're extremely variable in their coloration. This one is one of the more drab individuals I've seen, though if you look at him up close, he's kind of low in pattern, but he's got a lot of kind of pinks and greens. Up close, he's gorgeous, and his eyes are a brilliant and very grumpy yellow. This is not a very happy snake, but it is. <laughs> we get <can't know. laughs> This is such a great day. I'm getting these drops of rain from the heavens and the snake taking shots at my head when I look away. You're very grumpy. You're a very grumpy soul. <laughs> Woo! The Amazon tree boa. Hi, Grumpy. Hey there, Grumpster. This beautiful girl probably requires no introduction at all. This is the Peruvian rainbow boa. And what a gorgeous snake she is. She's looking to cruise a little bit. And if she bites me, I will be unsurprised. She's already cost the best blood of this generation. But what a spectacular snake. Interestingly enough, the most recent snake I've been bitten by is one of my Brazilian rainbow boas, which actually probably in reality came from Peru. We're actually not very far from the Brazilian border right now. And as it turns out, the distinction between the Peruvian rainbow boa and the Brazilian rainbow boa turns out to be no things, really. There was some talk. If you see on the side, there's almost like Kool-Aid man faces. That's at least how I've always thought of them. The, the proper term is ocelli. And in those ocelli, there can be these little half moons. And they can be bright or just sort of body colored. This one has very bright ones, which is more typical of the Peruvian rainbow boas. However, you know, the Brazilians and the Peruvians, they don't recognize national borders. This is just essentially a non-Colombian rainbow boa. The Colombian rainbow boas are different. And these guys are well known for their iridescence, which is incredibly striking. The sun's about to come out, so we might get to see a little bit of that. It's hard to ever get video or pictures that do it justice. But these snakes are really special really beautiful. Interestingly enough, they spend a lot of time on the forest floor. I think sometimes people think of them as being very arboreal, and they can be. They can get way up into trees, but most of the time they're cruising around on the ground looking for something to eat, and what they eat? Everything. They eat like boas. They love food. And these are part of the same clade with the anacondas, and you can feel that anaconda strength whenever you hold one. They're just amazingly powerful Amazingly beautiful snakes are very successful here and sort of all throughout this part of the world. They're, they have a really big range, just a very successful, very special snake. And I'm very thankful to have a pair of these that I get to interact with on a regular basis. If you, if you haven't seen our video on them, they're kind of notoriously difficult captives, 
But as it turns out, it's really not that they're difficult. They're just a little bit different from other snakes. Their temperature requirements are really important, not hard, but very important, and they need constant access to water. If you get those things wrong, you won't have success with your rainbow boa. If you get them right, though, they can be very, very reasonable, very rewarding captives. I love these snakes, and they're obviously just unbelievably gorgeous. Peruvian rainbow boa. This glorious little snake is a baby banded calico snake. And this snake is really a good example of why you need to know exactly what you're looking at before you pick it up. Because this is a snake that if I found it in the wild and I hadn't had time to identify it yet, uh, I would treat like a hot snake until I could identify it. Uh, the first time that I encountered this one, I treated it with great care. Now I know what it is and it's a wonderful, cute snake. It is venomous. It's rear fanged venomous. Uh, uses that venom to hunt lizards. At this size, he'd have a heck of a time getting his mouth around me enough to give me any of that venom. Uh, he's, he's bitten a couple of people, but his jaws are so small and his teeth so dainty that he doesn't do any damage just yet. And he's really mellowed out as he's learned that we're not gonna hurt him. But these are very cool snakes. They're very difficult to identify because their colors can vary greatly. And this is sort of common for calico snakes across the board. These guys, usually when they first hatch, they're white and black banded. And as they age, they transition to being red and black banded. And so, you know, at the intermediate form, you get something like this. Sometimes though, they keep that white and black banding all the way into adulthood. Sometimes uh, they stay sort of like this, where they're tricolored. There's just a lot of variation in these guys, but I think at this particular stage, He's just absolutely beautiful. This is one of the most gorgeous snakes I've ever seen in my life. This color pattern sort of reminds me of the centipede eating snakes that I've seen turning up quite a bit at reptile expos and things. This guy though is a lizard eater instead of a centipede eater. Neither of those in my opinion are really ideal prey types. <laughs> Give me a little hug with your head. <laughs> Silly guy. Cute little orange eyeballs too. Those are one of those things that you just have to see. But. This is an adorable little fella, the banded calico snake. This little guy is a white-naped earth snake. And they're called white-naped because especially when they're young, they often have a little bit of white up on their head. I've heard some even have like a completely white head, but in general, uh, they end up a little bit more like this kind of earth colored. There can be a lot of variability in these. The reality is there's probably a lot of different species of what are now considered white naped earth snakes that are just not well studied and understood. But this is a very, very cool little snake. It seems to live a semi-fossorial lifestyle as evidenced by its very kind of torpedo shaped head and small eyeballs. This guy's kind of plowing through dirt and things, looking for their food of choice, which are earthworms. So this guy's a little earthworm eater, very cryptically colored, but I did notice that he's got a fair amount of iridescence, that kind of rainbow oil slick type sheen. Even his belly is fairly cryptic and, and muddy looking, but again, on that belly, I, I see a little bit of that iridescence. It's a really pretty snake. Iridescence seems to be pretty common down here in, in the Amazon and, uh, I, I've heard that that might be kind of just a result of having a very smooth scale. So there might be something about being down here that favors these really smooth scale types, or it could be something uh, that there's actually a benefit to being iridescent. I just don't know. What I do know is that this little snake is very cute. Look at your little eyes. This glorious little beauty is an ornate snail eating snake. And I am quickly becoming obsessed with these incredible beauties. The longer I stare at it, the more unusual it becomes. Their body shape is kind of triangular. Their back comes to a definite point. And they've got fairly normal snake style scales on the sides, but right along their spine, these almost look like the scoots of a turtle shell right down the spine of a turtle. They're big and like, they're, they're hexagonal scales. Very, very unusual. This pattern is gorgeous and they're super laid back. And they eat slugs 
and snails. Slugs they refer to generally as the lazy man's snail. And the way that they manage to eat a snail is they will sneak up on it, as is possible to do with a snail, and grab the snail before it pulls itself into its shell, and then using crazy snake jaws, because snake jaws are crazy, and they can articulate them one side at a time. That's how they swallow their prey whole, any sort of snake. Well, these guys use that mechanism to pull the snail, almost like a treadmill, one side at a time, choo, 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 and it just pulls that snail out of its shell and down the hatch. These guys are stupendously cool and they're, they're supposed to be fairly common in this area and we did find two in, just last night alone. So I'm hoping I get to spend a lot of time with these gorgeous, ornate, snail-eating snakes. What an amazing creature. So beautiful and so weird. This is an Amazon scarlet snake. And this particular one is not in very good shape. We're gonna let it go right away. But we did notice a really interesting thing about it, which is that it has a little pseudoscorpion hanging out right on the bottom of its eye, which is pretty wild. If you saw our video about the arthropods that we found here, you would see that we had a harlequin beetle, which is that beetle with the crazy long front legs and the giant antenna. And apparently pseudoscorpions also frequently hitch a ride underneath the elytra, underneath the wings of the harlequin beetles. And so apparently they can do that on snakes as well. And that makes sense. That's how they disperse. That's how they go from one place to another, hitching a ride on other animals, like this poor scarlet snake. We gave it a big drink. Hopefully it can go on its way. I'm back with another banded calico snake. The last one we saw was an adorable little baby that was just beginning what is called an ontogenic color shift. It was changing from its black and white banding to its black and orange banding, and I told you eventually they get a black and orange banding. Well, here it is. We found an older banded calico snake, and this one has made the transition. You can still see those bands are lighter up near the head than they are down by the tail because that transition starts at the tail and makes its way up. They don't all make this transition, but the majority of them do. And uh, some of these are pretty convincing little coral snake mimics. A very cool snake. Definitely not one to pick up though, unless you know what it is. Narrow little head's a pretty good giveaway though. The banded calico snake. Well, I'm gonna say, though I have fallen in love with many of the snakes we've found out here, this is my favorite snake that we've found so far in the Peruvian Amazon and I had no idea they even existed until we spotted this guy. For that reason, last night when we found him out on the trail and I caught him, I treated him as though he were a dangerously venomous snake. I was pretty sure he wasn't because he doesn't, he doesn't have the body build at all of a coral snake. And I do know all of the vipers in this area, which is the only thing he could be. He has this big viper-like head though, and because I could not ID him, I, I needed to treat him with caution. Now that I know what he is, he's delightful and he's totally safe. This is a big-headed snail-eating snake, and it could not be more appropriately named. That head is colossal. Hopefully we can get some shots of it that do it justice, but it is a giant noggin. There are a few snail-eating snakes around here. This is the second species we've found, and they're all really neat, really laid back, but none of them have a head like this. This head is enormous, which leads me to think they probably feed on larger snails than the other snail-eaters. We've found some huge snails since we've been out here. This guy couldn't handle the biggest, but he could handle a pretty good-sized snail. These guys usually eat snails and slugs, just like other snail-eaters. They essentially, they kind of scoop their bottom jaw a little bit inside of the shell as they grab them. And then they use those fancy snake jaws, which can articulate independently one side from the other, both on the top and the bottom. And they just conveyor belt the snail out of its shell and swallow it down. They do it really, really quickly. But if you're not a snail, the snake is totally harmless and totally delightful. He's never shown even the slightest inkling of aggression. What he has shown is that he's beautiful. I think he's beautiful 
at a distance, but it's like the closer you get to him, the more gorgeous he becomes. He's got this like dark on dark pattern, which is pretty anyway, with little flecks of white and yellow. And these are the only dark bellied snail eating snakes in the area. And something I've just noticed that he can do is he can flatten himself. This is, this is uh, laterally. He can laterally flatten himself so that he develops a ridge down the middle of that belly, but oftentimes he's not like that. And I wonder what the use is of that. If that just makes him look bigger or if it allows him to hold on. Yeah, he's doing it just a little bit right now. It doesn't seem to be a defensive behavior, but it's definitely something he can do. And something that really stands out to me is that that dark belly, not only is it pretty on its own merits, but it's iridescent. So you get all these rainbows on it. Oh my gosh, this snake is just incredible. And I have entirely fallen in love with them. It's such a good snake, such a special snake. Oh. These are not particularly common. Uh, most of these expeditions, like the one we were on, they never find one. And so I'm super thankful that we got to have this experience. Usually they're way up in trees. This guy happened to be coming down for some reason. And so we were able to spot him. Oh, my new love, the big-headed snail-eating snake. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon that sent Will and I here to the Peruvian Amazon to film all of this amazing content. We could not have done it without you. Thank you so much. If you'd like to support us doing more things like this in the future, or just see the really cool things we have available to our patrons, please consider checking it out. This little cutie is an Amazon egg-eating snake. And in a lot of ways, it looks like a scarlet snake. It's got that same uh, kind of red coloration with a white belly and little bits of black on each scale. I don't know why that's been so beneficial in this habitat, but there's definitely some convergence on an almost identical looking body. The head is just a tiny bit different in that it's tricolored. So they got red down here farther on the neck and then they got a little black band. It's kind of like black and red blended and then yellow a big yellow band, and then a black nose. It actually looks a lot like the face of a lot of the coral snakes that you'd find in this area. But this is not a coral snake, this is a little egg-eating snake. And the Amazon egg-eating snake, like this little guy, probably specializes on eating lizard eggs. It's actually something I've noticed since I've been here. There aren't that many small birds. Quite a few bigger birds, but I don't see very many small birds moving around that would have eggs that say, a tiny little egg-eating snake like this could eat. What there are a lot of, lizards. These guys are on the ground hunting for lizard eggs. When they find them, they gobble them up. Cute little snake though. Not one you'd wanna pick up though if you didn't know what it was because you just never know around here. This pretty little snake is a common glossy racer. This is a kind of a juvenile common glossy racer. And one of the ways you can identify it as being a juvenile is first, it's quite a bit smaller. These guys get up around three feet long, maybe a little longer. And they also, as juveniles, have white banding, which is starting to fade on this one. But overall, it's got a really beautiful appearance. It's got kind of an olivey color to the, to the dorsal. And then its belly, its ventral, is a really beautiful yellow. Really, really pretty all the way down. It has white lips and great big alert eyes. This is a racer and racers in general tend to be fast and highly visual snakes. Most snakes are not super visual, but the racers are extremely visual. This guy probably feeds mostly on lizards and frogs, though, you know, even though this is a fairly common snake down here, we're in such a remote part of the world that not a whole heck of a lot is known about them still. So like we don't know a lot about their reproduction, their egg layers. Uh, but, you know, we have more to learn about that. We have more to learn about an awful lot of things. This is a largely unexplored world in a lot of ways, and so the amount that there is still to learn is much greater than what we already know. Look at those big eyes, though. You're beautiful. Common glossy racer. This rather glorious shoelace is a green striped vine snake, which is a very exciting find indeed. This snake is magnificent. When they say green striped, you know, sometimes you think of a snake as having stripes on its back. And it does, it has green stripes on its back. Kind of a tan base color, 
stripe down the middle. Oh, it's also got stripes on the side. Okay, well that should be the end of this, right? Nope, because if you flip it onto its belly, more stripes. Surely it ends there, right? Oh wait, no, because this snake, when it sticks out its tongue, guess what you find? A green stripe! Who knew? This snake is serious about being green striped. This snake is so interesting. These are arboreal hunters. So they spend a lot of time in shrubs and trees. They hunt primarily lizards and frogs, and they're rear-fanged venomous, though I'm not concerned. They're not particularly bitey, nor is the venom too terribly potent against people. It's supposed to be sort of like a bee sting. I don't like bee stings, but I've braved worse since I've been here. I could handle that in order to handle this. What a special little snake. One very cool thing, among many, about these guys is when they're threatened, they have a threat display very much like the Asian vine snakes. In fact, you know, in a whole lot of ways, they're a heck of a lot like the Asian vine snakes. So they, they puff up their throat and get all big and open their mouth and just try to look big and scary, even though they're really skinny and virtually harmless. They're so similar to the Asian vine snakes, but to my knowledge, they are not closely related at all. This is just an example of what's called convergent evolution, in that what worked there, that same basic form, there's no reason it wouldn't work here. Similar environments sometimes result in similar creatures. Oh my gosh, look at that lime green belly, the green striped vine snake. Right here is a really pretty snake. There are actually two snakes in this area that look almost exactly like this. One of them is a harmless calico snake, and the other is a potentially deadly coral snake. Which one is this? And how sure are you? This one, as it turns out, is the coral snake, the orange banded coral snake. And uh, this guy really genuinely, I mean, unless you really knew the coral snakes in this area, I don't think you would guess that this is a potentially deadly snake. It doesn't have the traditional tricolored appearance of most coral snakes at all. Not only is the order wrong, but the colors are kind of wrong. It doesn't have any reds at all. It's got kind of a yellow, orange, and then big black bands with double white bands. These double white bands in the black are actually one of the more telltale signs of coral snakes in this area. Of course, there are snakes that have that that aren't coral snakes, and there are snakes that are coral snakes that don't have that. So there's no surefire rules. To identify an orange banded coral snake, though, if you know that you have a coral snake and you're not already familiar with this pattern, it's the only coral snake in this area with an undivided anal plate. Of course, if you're getting that good of a look at it, you darn well better know what you're dealing with and how to deal with it. I don't anticipate I'm going to see that anal plate anytime soon, but this is an absolutely gorgeous snake. They feed primarily on other reptiles, especially other legless reptiles, and also legless amphibians. So they'll eat things like cassilians, but also, more than anything, they eat other snakes. They eat amphisbanids when they can find them. Uh, if you're a legless reptile, this is a very scary animal. If you're a, a, a lizard with legs or, or something like that, still a pretty scary animal. And honestly, if you're a person, as long as you leave it alone, not scary at all, but if you pick it up, uh, might be the last big mistake you ever make, the orange banded coral snake. This is a red vine snake, and these are supposedly extremely rare to find, though I will tell you, uh, we found one at Madre Selva, and we found three of them last night, but they are gorgeous, gorgeous snakes. They've got this orange face with sort of a yellow collar fading into black, then a bright red body with black stripes all the way down, and their belly is white and kind of translucent. You can actually see in there and see their, like their visceral mass a little bit. It's really, really interesting. These are very cool snakes, and those orange eyes bordered in black, vertical slit pupils. This one I found last night up in a tree about just a little over eye level and I was very, very excited about it. I didn't know that we would find two more in the same night, but uh, I love this guy. Now, I'm wearing gloves right now, and this isn't for my protection. This is a venomous snake. They're rear fang venomous. The venom 
You know, these being rare snakes, we don't know exactly how potent it is, but it's not thought that they would pose any real danger to humans. I'm not wearing this glove for my protection. I'm wearing this glove because here in the rainforest, I'm hot and sweaty and gross and clammy, and the snakes like this one stick to me. And, and that kind of makes them freak out, and so I, I gave them a smoother surface. So anyway, the snake is venomous, but not dangerous. It is beautiful. What it is not is a proper vine snake. This is a proper vine snake. This is a green striped vine snake. We already took a look at this guy. But when you look at them side by side, this guy looks more like a ground snake than it does like a vine snake. He is long and thin and they do spend some time up in trees, but more often than not actually, you find them on the ground. And when we've tried to film this guy by putting him in a tree, he's usually phew, heading straight for the ground. Not the case with the vine snake. Both are super cool though. I don't even know which one I like more. Which one's your favorite? Red vine snake, green striped vine snake. Oh, look at that cool tongue. This little guy here, what a cute little snake. Let's see, he's kind of red with little yellow patches on the back. Probably nothing to worry about. Of course, if I grab him, I could be dead very, very quickly. This is a Langdorf's coral snake also known as a confusing coral snake because, well, not only because they don't look like a traditional coral snake, they don't have always that black, yellow, and red banding, but also because they don't even always look like one another. There's huge variation within this group. And this is a very good reason to think about what snake you have and make sure you know what it is before you touch it because making a mistake with this snake could be the last mistake I ever make. Wow, but look at how beautiful it is. Look at the way it moves. And just like any other snake, it has no interest in engaging with me in any sort of a fight or anything like that. It just wants to mind its own business. It would like for me to leave it alone. When it does get scared, it rolls up its tail in a very distinctive kind of South American coral snake posture where, it, where you can see it's got like a bright white undertail. But right now he's pretty calm, just cruising. And this one's just a baby, but they don't get a heck of a lot bigger than this either. Langdorf squirrel snake. So last night, while we were out, we found yet another orange ringed coral snake. This one though seems to be pretty laid back, not much of a biter. These are all lies, by the way. This is a mimic of the orange ringed coral snake. This is the black headed calico snake. And I gotta tell you, when we found it on the trail, I didn't pick it up. I spent a long time hooking it and getting a good look at it, good look at it, good look at it, because I know that there is a mimic around, but also I know that there is a model around, which is the orange ringed coral snake. And this guy, especially in the dark while he's moving quickly, is a very convincing mimic. After a while, we were able to get a good enough look at his head He's got that long, skinny head of the calico snake, not the wide, broad head of the coral snake. His pattern is not exactly that of the coral snake, though back here, it's very, very similar. Up front, the orange bands go away for a time, and so you've got a lot of white bands with no orange banding. Of course, there are aberrantly patterned coral snakes, so you've got to be extremely careful before you pick up a snake. It really wasn't until today that I got a good enough look at him, had my field guides present, and I was like, okay, this snake is okay to handle. But this is a baby black-headed calico snake, and these are just really great little snakes. We actually have an entire video on coral snake mimicry, but this one is uh, a dang good mimic indeed, and a very, very pretty snake. These calico snakes can be very variable in their pattern, but more often than not, with, with the black-headed calico, you're gonna get this basic patterning. Really gorgeous black face, that's very characteristic of them, of course, also of the orange ringed coral snake. And then that orange ring around the head, also the same. Then here's where you get to mostly black and white banding, that's different a little bit from the orange ringed coral snake. Here in the back though, you've got very much that orange ringed coral snake pattern. This is a snake to be careful with, for sure, but once you know what it is, just an adorable little guy. These do get quite a bit bigger than this. This one's very young. I would say probably hatched out within the last year. But a, a really great find. And honestly, I'm more excited that it is the Mimic than the model, because we've already seen the model. 
And this is a special snake, the black-faced calico snake. This little beauty is a young aquatic coral snake. And we've found these before at Madre Selva. We've pointed out the fact that they are a red on black coral snake. Uh, actually, you know, you're not gonna find a red on yellow coral snake for the most part down here. There are a lot of different coral snakes that have red on black patterns or don't have this tricolor pattern at all. A lot of them are banded. It's just all over the place. You can't just pick up a snake if you don't know what it is. No rhyme will save you. But this is just one of the coolest snakes in the whole world. I, I first found out about them several years ago and it has been a dream to see one because they really aren't in captivity. They don't seem to do well at all. In the wild, they feed primarily, as far as we can tell, on eels. And they'll, they'll catch other fish as well, most likely, maybe amphibians on top of that. But eels are a big part of their diet. And for whatever reasons, we're, we're just not successful keeping them in captivity. So if you want to see an aquatic coral snake, you got to come here to do it. And I am loving this experience of being in the presence of such a glorious animal. These guys are really big coral snakes. A lot of coral snake species, especially in North America, don't get a whole heck of a lot bigger than this guy is right now. These guys get up over four feet long, which is a really, really big coral snake. Uh, the one that we found at Madre Selva was considerably larger than this guy, but this guy is young and so pretty, so, so pretty, gorgeous. That head is just amazing. Not only is it red, but it's got all the black bordering all of the scales. They're just such beautiful special animals. And their little threat display that they do, you can see they cock their head off to the side. They'll often flatten their tail up and spiral it around. And that says, I'm a really grumpy coral snake. And the thing is, um, they mean business. They mean business. If, if you don't respect this animal, it'll make you pay potentially with your life. This is not an animal that you want to be bitten by. Of course, it's easy to avoid, generally speaking, if you're wearing the right kind of footwear and you're not uh, doing really dangerous things like picking them up or trying to kill them, then there's genuinely not much threat to you from this or any other coral snake. Coral snakes are reclusive animals. They'd like to be left alone. The last thing in the world that they want to do is pick a fight with a human. And uh, so if you don't pick a fight with them, they won't pick a fight with you. Oh, so special though. What a cool creature, the aquatic coral snake. This cute little snake happens to be a baby of the most dangerous, at least in terms of people bitten and likely people killed, of any snake in this area. And that is the fertile ants. The fertile ants is a viper. And as such, it has two movable fangs, as opposed to the fixed fangs that you see on the coral snakes and other elapids. Having fixed fangs means you really need to get your mouth around something before you're gonna be able to bite it. But vipers, being able to pivot their fangs, A, they can have longer fangs because they fold back, and B, they shoot out almost in front of the snake. So when they strike, they tend to hit whatever it is they're trying to bite, and they don't even need to really get their mouth around it in order to envenomate it. These guys also, they're very cryptically colored. You can see he blends in really well with the environment here. And they often hang out near habitations. They'll, they'll hang out right in a, in a little area like this where people are walking regularly and you won't see them because they're so well camouflaged. And as such, you might bump right into one, step right on it, and they are not hesitant to bite when threatened, when attacked. And when you step on a snake, it feels like it's being attacked. As babies, these guys have bright little tails, and this guy still has that. And that tail they use is what's called a caudal lure. It means they use it to lure in prey, like little lizards. They'll wiggle it around like a, a worm or something, and a little lizard will go, hey, I wonder what that is, and bop on over there to check out something to eat, and whammo, fertile ants. Pretty great prey hunting strategy. As adults, that tends to fade out, and they don't have that caudal lure anymore. But what a cool little guy, kind of, kind of a checkerboard belly, neat mask. This is a beautiful snake. I love vipers, but this is a dangerous snake for sure. I'm privileged to see one, but I sure would hate to make a mistake with one. This is a very serious, very big, very amazing snake. This is the Bushmaster. Now when we were at Madre Selva, 
we found a Bushmaster. And that was the first time a Bushmaster had been found in that area in 25 years. So it was genuinely a very big deal. It was a big deal that one was found there, but it was nowhere near the size of this incredible snake. This one is probably right around two meters, you know, up around seven feet long, making it a very sizable, but not unreasonably large Bushmaster. These guys have been recorded, you know, and this isn't, this isn't just a rumor. The largest verified Bushmaster was 11 feet, 10 inches long. So very nearly 12 feet long. This is a enormous viper. And for a viper, there's one thing about them, other than being super long, that's really unusual. And that is that these are egg laying vipers. Most vipers, at least in, in the new world, in the neotropics, they're viviparous or, or ovoviviparous. They, they give live birth. These guys lay eggs. And then the mothers very often stay with the clutch and protect it. They're pretty good protectors. These guys are probably fairly common, but they're not seen all that often because they're very cryptic and they can sit just like this, motionless for days at a time, waiting for food to come by. They're excellent ambush predators. Their scalation is incredible. It's incredible. They've got heavily, heavily keeled scales, especially as you get up on top of the spine. When you get to that point, I mean, you can see these just right through a snake bag anywhere that you can tell there's a bushmaster in there because of those huge tall sharply keeled scales right on the spine of the animal but these guys genuinely are masters of their domain they are the kings around here and as a result they're very very laid back very uninclined to be aggressive you know this is not a fight you want to pick and so you know they're like that one of those people that you pick up and start shoving and they just look at you and go, I don't think you want to do this. They, they know who they are. The, they know they're the biggest, baddest snake around, except for maybe the green anaconda. And uh, most things probably don't mess with a Bushmaster. Humans do though. And that's probably about the best way to get yourself bitten by a Bushmaster is trying to harm a Bushmaster. If you just leave them alone, they're happy to leave you alone. Is a good idea though to wear boots because they uh, pack a wallop. What an amazing snake. I am so excited that we got to see this one. This is absolutely one of the highlights of this already unbelievable trip, the Bushmaster. Well, I can't think of a better way to end this video, searching for all of the snakes here at Santa Cruz than here with this amazing coral snake and its mimic. As always, like and subscribe, and we'll see you real soon. You are not happy about anything, are you? All right. Woohoohoo! Oh boy. Just got a clear shot at my hand now. Hey, hey. Hey. These are not the droids you're looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. Yeah, don't turn off that one for anything. It's still coming. He's still gonna get me. Hey buddy, everything's okay. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. He moves in very grumpy ways. It's all right, it's all right.